Hello everyone, so in this tutorial uh, we are going to learn how we can build uh, up slash down synchronous uh, counter that means we will want to do uh, both the up counter and the down counter in a single circuit alright so here uh, you can see the definition that uh, an up down synchronous counter means a bidirectional counter that is capable of counting either up or down so uh, we will be building a circuit that will count both upwards and downwards at the same time based upon the user inputs alright so um, here's the initial diagram that you're gonna be uh, drawing alright so this is the diagram this is the diagram that uh, you are going to draw at the very beginning so this is the question 3 bit synchronous up slash down counter and you will be uh, building the circuit using t flip flops alright so that is given in the question so at the very beginning what you will do uh, you will create the state diagram uh, for this 3 bits since uh, it's shown as 3 bits so for 3 bits we will get 8 different combinations and here are the combinations and here you can see uh, the black colored arrow indicates uh, the up counter part and the red colored arrow indicates the uh, down counter part so in case of up counter we're just going from lower value to higher value that means we're going from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 5 5 to 6 6 to 7 and eventually from 7 to 0 again and in case uh, of the down counter uh, we're going downwards all right so that means we are basically going uh, from uh, 7 to 6 6 to 5 5 to 4 uh, 4 to 3 3 to 2 2 to 1 and 1 to 0 and eventually from 0 to 7 again all right so here the black colored arrows uh, or the black colored transitions indicate the uh, up counter part and the red colored transitions indicate the down uh, indicates the down counter part all right so based upon this state diagram we're going to be uh, building a state table here so this is the this is the state table all right so this is the overall state table so as you can see in the state table since uh, it's showing uh, that we have to build the circuit for three bits so in the present state uh, we'll be using three different variables q2 q1 q0 so these variables could be different based upon uh, your own wish but here we are using q2 q1 and q0 and in the next state there will be three states q2 plus q1 plus and q0 plus so uh, we just uh, uh, we're just trying to uh, fill this table uh, based upon this state diagram here take a look here so for now just ignore this first column okay now ignore this first column here the M column uh, just concentrate on the present state and the next state so uh, here uh, in the first eight rows alright so till this point okay so what we did uh, we actually uh, tried to fill the table up based upon the up counterpart for example in the first row we can see if the present state is 0 0 0 then the next state would be 0 0 1 right from 0 0 0 we are going to 0 0 1 and from 0 0 1 we are going to 0 1 0 here you can see if the present state is 0 0 1 then the next state is 0 1 0 all right and if the present state is 0 1 0 then the next state is 0 1 1 so we are just writing uh, whatever given uh, whatever is uh, given here in the uh, state diagram all right so this is continued up to this row right here okay up to this point and after that we're basically uh, writing the same stuff for the down counter part here you can see that from 0 we're going to 7 because as you can see uh, if you follow the red colored uh, arrows then here you can see that we're going from 0 to 7 in case of the down counter part all right then from 1 to 0 right here 1 to 0 then from 2 to 1 3 to 2 uh, so you're just uh, continuing this whole trans uh, transition whole circular transition in our state table all right here we can see if the present state is 2 then the next state would be 1 if the present state is 3 then the next state would be 2 if the present state is 4 then the next state would be 3 and uh, so on all right so for the first eight rows okay for the first eight rows we just uh, wrote the uh, tr 
uh, wrote the values for up counter and on the bottom eight rows we just wrote the values for the down counter part all right so once we're done with that now we have to think about the up slash down part all right so uh, this counter uh, should work as up counter sometimes and should work as down counter sometimes and that depends upon the user inputs all right so for user input uh, we have to uh, put up a specific switch or specific input uh, which would be an external input uh, which would not be connected to present state or next state all right so here the external input is given as m all right you can name it differently if you want so here we are naming it m and here as we can see as long as we are building the up counter uh, we are putting zero in uh, as the value for m right so here on the first eight rows uh, we are actually uh, building the state table based on the up counter and here the value for the for row number uh, one to row number eight the value remains zero all right and when uh, we are building it for the down counter part then the value uh, changes into one right so when we are building an up counter then m remains zero and where we are building a down counter then we are changing the value of m to one so depending upon whatever value is given in m then the circuit works accordingly right so if i want to uh, make the circuit uh, if i want to if i want the circuit to work as up counter then i should put zero uh, as a zero uh, I, I should put zero in m and if i want my circuit to work as down counter then i should put one in m all right so this m is working as an external switch or external input uh, to determine whether my counter is working as an up counter or down counter all right so with m and with the three present states as you can see so let me just uh, yeah sorry so let me just erase all the part okay so as you can see with m and with all these three states there are four states in t uh, there are four variables in total all right so there are four variables in total so m q2 q1 q0 and now uh, if you take a look at this whole table then you will see that from this row to this row we are basically getting 16 different combinations all right so we're basically getting 16 different combinations uh, since we are using four different variables so we should be getting 16 different combinations and that's what uh, it's doing all right so there are 16 different combinations from 0 to 15 all right so you can check the sequence if you want all right so once you've done with the uh, present state part and next state part then you have to write the flip-flop inputs and the flip-flop inputs can be written following the excitation table for t flip-flop so uh, we'll just follow the excitation table and write down the flip-flop inputs for example just take a look at uh, one or two uh, random examples uh, for the first row let's check out the first row here tq2 uh, i'm writing zero all right so why did i write zero because i uh, when i calculate tq2 i should look into q2 and q2 plus all right so here uh, the q2 or the present state is zero and the next state is zero too so i go back to the excitation table and i find this specific combination where the present state is zero and the next state is zero and it shows me that the flip-flop input should be zero so that's why i put zero here okay so take a look at a, a random example so let's t check out this row okay so here the present state is zero and the next state is one so you go back to the uh, excitation table and uh, i find this combination where the present state is zero and the next state is one and in that case uh, the flip-flop input is one all right so here i write one as my flip-flop input so when uh, i follow the same rule for all other rows and i do the same stuff for tq1 and tq0 remember when you want to calculate tq1 you only want uh, you only want to uh, see q1 and q1 plus you don't need q2 or q0 part all right and when you want to calculate tq0 then you wa only want uh, q0 and q0 plus you don't need q2 or q1 all right so just follow the same rule and follow the excitation table and then uh, fill up all those columns all right so once you're done with the flip-flop inputs then what you will do then uh, you will uh, create the 
kmaps all right so there are three flip flop inputs and so since there are three flip flop inputs so there will be three kmaps all right one for tq2 one for tq1 and one for tq0 so here are the kmaps and remember what would be the uh, what would be the uh, inputs for the kmaps so uh, usually the inputs are actually uh, the present states only but here uh, we have some other inputs uh, besides the present states we have M here which is working as an external switch alright so the inputs would be all of these four variables so M Q2 Q1 Q0 so we'll follow the uh, same sequence just uh, like the table and we'll put it on the kmaps and we'll do the necessary squares and uh, we'll put once uh, where it's needed and then we'll uh, do the groupings and we'll eventually we'll find the functions so once we find the functions then we can uh, just then we can just uh, uh, build the uh, final circuit all right so we are getting three functions for three uh, variables tq2 tq1 and tq0 so we are getting three different equations and once we get the equations then we can build the circuit so we'll need three flip-flops that we have decided previously right so uh, we'll be drawing three different uh, flip-flops three t flip-flops here as you can see so three t flip-flops so one uh, would have q0 as the output another one would have q1 and another one would have q2 so basically t this would be tq0 and this would be tq1 and this would be tq2 and then uh, you can just do the rest uh, based upon the equations all right so here are the equations just uh, uh, just connect the necessary wires based upon those equations and this would be the final circuit so that's it for this tutorial uh, hope everyone understands thank you very much